Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Rusty Manga Design. In this tutorial we're going to look at how you use the boost post function to push your content out to a wider audience than has been possible before. I have a post here on my Facebook page which relates to a blog that I did on my website. As you can see, it consists of a short little paragraph about what the blog post is about. Then I have a link to my website where the full blog post is displayed and I have an image that garners attention. From there, I need to go down here to boost post. Now this one's already gone out to my Facebook feed people and it's reached 133 people, but those are only the ones who have followed my Facebook feed. If I press on boost post, I can access an audience that I don't normally get attention from. This is your boost screen and on the right hand side it gives you an example of what the post is going to look like when it appears in people's Facebook feeds. On the left hand side are all the nitty gritty details that we need to cover. If you've never done this before, the first thing you'll do over here is create a new audience. I've already done this, so I'll bring up my edit screen, displays the same information and I'll tell you how it works. In here, I need to describe what my audience is going to be like, my ideal target audience for my information or my content. So first of all, I need to go and put a name up the top here. And this is my audience for Far North Queensland. Then I choose a gender, or I don't. In this case, I've chosen to go to all, which means men and women. But you could specify what your target audience is. Perhaps you're running a fashion store and you want to target only women. Maybe you're selling fishing gear and you want to go to men. Bit of a stereotype there, but you see what I mean. But in my case, I'm going to all. Then I choose my age group. Now I'm aimed at small businesses, so I'm going for the 18 to 60 year old age group. This means it will not display in the feeds of people younger than that age or older than the upper limit of the ages there. And locations. I'm aimed for people around the Innisfail district. Now this is a US company, Facebook, so things are measured in miles. So I've got plus 50 miles. So this actually covers me all the way up to Cairns and all the way down to Cardwell. Finally, you put in the interests of your target audience. I'm putting up uh, posts for small business. So obviously I want people who are interested in Facebook, business, entrepreneurship, marketing and small business. So those are the interest levels of my target audience. Facebook knows what you're interested in because it watches your posts, it watches what you share and it keeps a little bit of a database on what you like to see and do in your Facebook feed. And that's where this information comes in really handy. To find out more or gain more interests, you can just type into the search box down here and type in what's relevant to your particular field. Once you've done that, click on save and we go back to the previous pop-up window. Scrolling down, we get to budget and duration. Now the great thing here is you can set yourself a total budget and you will not spend any more than that. It's spread out over the duration that you want to run the ad for and I always go for $7 for seven days, which takes me to $49, that's for the week. And I know that I'm not gonna spend any more than that. You can go higher, you can go lower, depending on what you wanna do and what you can afford. Facebook says that I can reach 1,400 people on the lower band, or I could reach up to 3,700 people, which would be fantastic. I'm gonna run it for seven days, you can run it for one day, you can run it for 14 days, it's your choice. And then you've got your tracking conversions. Now you'll need to read up about these because they do involve adding a piece of code to your actual website. But this tracking conversion shows people, or tracks more specifically, people who go from your Facebook feed across to your website. So it gives you a good bit of analytical data and tells you how things are working out for you. Finally, you put in your payment method, which is generally a credit card. Once you've got that all sorted out and you're ready to go, you click on boost and your boost will go away to Facebook for approval. Normally takes no more than five minutes. And what will happen is you will get a little message in your Facebook feed that says your ad has been approved. It'll start running from that moment on. And from that moment on, you'll get a little bit of a bar chart or bar graph underneath the post that you've boosted and tells you how it's going. This is one that I ran last week asking if I want to boost it again. Last week this post went out and 131 followers from the, my Facebook feed, those people who have gone and actually liked the Rusty Mango Design Facebook page, 131 of them saw this on their feeds. 
but this is the important bit and this is what we pay for, 1,734 people have also seen this ad in their feed. They have been part of that boost and my brand has been exposed to 1,734 poor, 34 more people. That's resulted in 69 new clicks through to my website. I've read the analytics on this already. And I've got four new followers on my Facebook feed. So it's been worthwhile. But the key to this is consistency. Don't just do a boost this week and then leave it for six months before you do the next one. Do a boost for a few weeks in a row and see if you get a roll on effect. The more people you have seeing your brand, the more likely, likely you're going to stick in their brain and they're going to say, hey, I need their services and they'll come to you because they know that you provide quality content on your feed, quality content on your website, and that equates to quality goods and services. And that's the purposes of a Facebook boost, and that's how easy a Facebook boost is.